Okay, today we're going to discuss Canvas LMS. And Canvas has a lot of elements to it uh, with the Creative Commons and, and cartridges. But today we're just going to focus on one aspect of Canvas, and that's the ePortfolios. ePortfolios are Canvas's way of giving you as a teacher a, a teacher website. Now, in through that website, you can post photos, post newsletters, have assignments for students to complete. So what we're going to do today is just go over first, you know, what a portfolio is, you know, let's look at a finished portfolio and then show you the steps in order to create your own portfolio. Now, the first thing you're going to need is a login to your Canvas account. And our specific website is saccs.instructure.com. Now, what this does, it takes you to our instance of Canvas that's specifically assigned to us. Now, that website may vary based on your school, but for us, it's saccs.instructure.com. So at this point, you'll log into Canvas. Once you get in there, you're going to see your dashboard. Here on your dashboard are all the courses that you are enrolled in or that you currently host. Now these are courses and that's another lesson for another day, but what well, I do want you to see on the left side is you'll see the courses, different groups that are created, your inbox for any email messages, your calendar of all your events. See under courses you can see list of the different courses I'm in and groups I've created. My calendar you can see is very full once it loads up here. You can see all the different calendars on the right side that feed into it. My inbox is where I can check any messages that have been sent through Canvas. And Commons is a great place that you can share your ePortfolios and all of your courses once you've created them. But today we want to focus on just ePortfolios. So after you've logged in, go ahead and click your name or your account and go ahead and click ePortfolios. And here are my ePortfolios. I only have two, one that I've created for kinder teachers as a sample, and then my own that I use in my classes. When you first get into your ePortfolio, there is a startup wizard. So if you're not comfortable at all with Canvas, this is a great place to start. But hopefully after the lesson today, you're, you're comfortable enough to create your own. Now this is my class page for all of my courses. You can see all the courses below that I teach AV, TV, multimedia, and so on. And what you see here on the side are sections. An ePortfolio for Canvas has sections and on the right side has pages. So we're going to go over those two, learn the differences between them, and show you how to add content to this ePortfolio today. So first let's look through. As I clicked AV1, you can see it links to a new page, banners at the top. What I have listed in here are syllabus, materials, something that a student can reference throughout the semester and be able to go back to. Also you'll see down at the bottom there were announcements, student work, and additional resources that a student can access through each and every one of these courses. You'll also see on the left side under my sections that you know, I have a place for my biography. On the right side you can see that after you click one of the classes there are pages. Pages are a subsection of the main sections you have on the left side. So within your course so any of those courses, AV1, multimedia, they're going to have additional pages that you can click. Pages are important because what you don't want to do is load up your sections with too many options for people. Let them have your sections as the main ones and be able to click the sections you want and then have sub pages in there. Now let's go ahead and make a new ePortfolio. So I'm going to click my name and again, and you're going to see ePortfolios and it's going to take you to the screen that allows you on the right side to just simply click create an ePortfolio. After you click that at the bottom it allows you to name it. In this case I'll just give it a quick name of class and you have the option to make it public or leave it private. That, that's up to you. I'm going to go ahead and make this ePortfolio and as I click it again you're going to see that startup wizard which is helpful if you're not comfortable in Canvas. If you are comfortable we're going to go ahead and get this started. So I'm going to start by actually clicking the home tab so you can see in this brand new ePortfolio that is completely empty. Nothing in here yet. It even says nothing entered yet. I have a blank canvas. And in that blank canvas there's many options that you can do. And to do that we're going to edit this page on the right side. You can name the page which you'd like. I like welcome. I'm going to keep it at that for right now. But down here you have a rich text editor very similar to what many of you are used to in Microsoft Word. Very basic functions, your text, your justifications. 
you can embed images and link them to use on the left side under account there was a tab called files I highly recommend that whatever resources you want included in your website that you go to files and upload what's similar to an internet or a, a finder folder is that you, you can create folders and drop in all of your images and resources ahead of time and it makes building your ePortfolio that much more simple. So after you've uploaded any files that you think you're going to need, we can go back, we can edit this page, and we got a blank one. And we're going to go ahead and enter first. I'm going to show you how to enter an image. So here I'm going to click the image icon. I'm going to hit embed. Now here you've got URL, canvas, and Flickr. We'll get to those in a minute. But here I can scroll through all the files I've uploaded, and I can look for ones that I've created. In this case, I've created a banner for my class. So I'm going to scroll through and select a banner and you notice the dimensions stay. You can change those. I'm going to go ahead and hit update and it pops it right in there nice and pretty. You know and I have the ability to manipulate it in here if I choose to. But at this point if you want to check what you're doing you can go ahead and just hit save on that and it's going to show you right there on your home page. There's your banner at top nice and clean simple. Now if I go back to edit page, I have the ability to add in text to the rich text content. If I click it, you'll see it actually gives me a new box. This is kind of helpful because you don't want things to kind of mess up each other. It gives me a new box. I'm just going to type welcome to my class. I can allow comments on the page, the comments be public or not. Hit save and you see right there it says welcome to my class. Even though there was a gap between, you'll see it puts them right next to each other. And anything I want to type up and add a syllabus, course materials I just type that in list it out format it to the way I want it to look hit save on the page and it's done and ready to go no comments yet so again these are your sections on the left these are your main tabs that you want so I'm gonna go ahead and add a couple more to show you how easy it is you click add section and I'm gonna go ahead and add a biography tab and I'm gonna go ahead and add a resource tab and notice right away I once I've added them I can just hit done editing and I now have three tabs that anyone student parent can click through you notice I click resources it's a blank page similar to the other to the home page I click back to home and you'll see my banner and the, the content that I've added in click biography and it's blank so what we want to do is these are our sections so now I have three sections to mine and if I want to edit any one of those, I would edit it the same way by hitting edit page. And now what I want to show you now is how to link files. So I'm going to go and I'm going to pick a folder that I'm going to link to one of these other sections that I've just created. And this is very easy to do. I'm going to find the perfect picture, put it in there, click update. Right now it's just an image. It does nothing. But if you simply find the path that you like, and you can do that by right clicking anywhere in Canvas and saying copy link. It's going to take the link to that specific section, come down here and I hit my link to URL and just paste it in right there and hit insert link. Once I hit save, you can see now that is a linkable object. I can click it and it's going to take me to the resource page. Notice that there's nothing in here, but I can edit this page and actually call it resources so I can make sure I'm in the right spot. Hit save and continue on. So linking things is very easy as long as you have a URL you can link to within Canvas or you can link externally to the anywhere else on the internet. Now again, these are your sections on the left, but what I want to show you next are how sections differ from pages. So within a section you can have more pages or tabs that parents and students can click. So under resources I'm going to click organize and manage pages and I'm going to add in RenWeb which is our SIS, our student information system for our class, our school. And I'm going to hit, um, what I'm going to do with that is I actually want to put in a logo to RenWeb that allows me to link directly to that sub page that I created. So here I'm going to click RenWeb, click update. I now have a beautiful RenWeb logo. And with that, <clears throat> I can go and grab the copy link off of the page I created on the right hand side and I can simply paste it on in there. So right there on the right you see RenWeb, right click, copy link, go to edit page, and I'm going to click that RenWeb link to URL, paste it, insert link, and boom, I now have 
this icon linked to a sub page within my section. Very easy to link, very easy to use. And what I want to show you now is aside from just putting in images that you've prior uploaded, you have the ability to embed YouTube videos. So you don't have to just paste a link. But if you're comfortable with YouTube, any video that you create and upload or even a video that you've shown in class and want to use as a resource, if you're fairly savvy in YouTube, as you watch a video on YouTube at the very bottom, there's a button that says share. And under share, of course, there's the link to share it with other people. But what's more important for Canvas is there's one that's called embed. Embedding allows you to put a video right directly in Canvas without taking them over to YouTube. You paste that in and hit save. Notice my video is now embedded right within my ePortfolio. As a parent clicks it, it does not take you anywhere else on the internet. It leaves you right there and keeps kids from going somewhere else you may not want them to go. Now, let's say you didn't do the front end work with uploading a bunch of images. Canvas also gives you options to access Flickr. Under Flickr are a bunch of free images, resources that you can use simply by typing a word. As you type where I type resource, kind of a vague word, but you notice it gives me an array of pictures that I can pick from and I look for one I like and I simply click it. It gives me the option to change dimension. I click update and I now have an image directly from Flickr that kept me from having to upload anything on the front end. Now, goods and bads to that, good that you can grab something quick, bad in that it's probably not as unique as you may like, but it's still a wonderful resource. The last thing I want to show you is what if you have multiple buttons that you want to put in? There's a way to organize those. If you just start dropping images, it can get a little messy. I highly recommend using a table. If you know you have three icons, choose a table with three squares and navigate to the three icons that you want inserted within yours. So I'm going to go ahead and give it a Twitter icon, go back, oh, I'm not going to link it just yet. I'm going to go back and insert all of mine and go to Canvas and I've uploaded all these ahead of time and that's why they're there for me. So it does take a little work on the front end, but once they're there, they're always there and you can use them for anything else. So now what you see is it gave me three icons that are equally spaced. Maybe those are a little bit too big for what I want for my page. And it gives me the ability to just drag in. And you can see as I drag, it shows you the pixel and dimensions so you can make sure you're making each one of them the same size. If you want to center your table, you just simply click your table and go to table properties and you can align it to center. And now you have this beautiful table that's in the middle. Notice the table does not show, it's just the buttons. And I can make any one of those three linkable just by clicking them, clicking the link to URL, and pasting in the link where I want it to go. This really helps keep your, your icons organized on a page. So again, this is how you create your ePortfolio. Every ePortfolio you create has a very unique and distinct URL that you can send to your families and your students so that they can access it. And this is, this is just one part of Canvas, the LMS, that allows you to create an ePortfolio or a teacher website. And if you have any questions, please contact me on my page for any further information.